Okay, it doesn't sound like I'm being followed. You, you're just the person I'm looking for. I'm glad you can come to this uh, top secret location so we can discuss this. Did you know that there is a top secret trigonometric substitution that your calculus professor does not want you to know about? And I have it right here. I'm gonna show it to you and I'm about to change your mathematical career. Maybe I'm being a little harsh on your calculus professor, but seriously though, take a look at this. Here I have a calculus book published sometime in the 1950s, and the substitution I'm about to show you takes up an entire section of the book, well, just like a page and a half or so, to introduce the topic. Uh, whereas a more modern textbook, I think this one was about 10 years ago, uh, introduces the topic as an exercise and uh, gives a few examples here. So, um, over time, this integration technique has just been sort of suppressed. To be sure, this trig sub isn't like the other trig subs you might have covered in your class before. Uh, in the ones you might have seen in class, you'll be taking things that are polynomials and turning them into trig functions. Like maybe you'll have an x squared minus 9, and you're going to try and turn that into maybe like, I don't know, sine, and turn the x into a sine and see what happens. Uh, this goes the reverse direction. Maybe you're trying to integrate a function that has a bunch of trig functions in it in the first place, and you can go turn that into something with polynomials. Because let's face it, generally speaking, polynomials are way easier to integrate. Um, integrating things involving trig functions can get pretty messy, especially if you have trig functions in the denominator. And so that's what this method helps to do. Um, the idea is that if you can turn it into something involving polynomials instead, then you can use other techniques that, um, while tedious, are a lot more effective like uh, partial fraction decomposition. So this substitution um, goes by the name the universal trig sub. You may have also heard it called, the, you may also hear it called the Weierstrass substitution, although Weierstrass did not come up with it. Um, and the way that it works is that you replace um, tangent of x over two with t, and already the substitution looks really weird. Why are we doing the half angle of tangent? We'll talk about that later in the video. Um, and then you get that sine of x is replaced with 2t over 1 plus t squared. You replace cosine with 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. And finally, your differential, um, that's supposed to say dx. I don't know why I wrote dt. <laughs> uh, but that's supposed to be dx gets replaced with 2dt over 1 plus t squared. Let's go ahead and see some examples of this substitution in practice. Let's start off with a simple example of this substitution. So we'll start by trying to integrate the function cosecant of x with respect to x. Now, if you've ever had to integrate this function before, uh, you know that the standard way to do this is that you have to multiply the um, top and the bottom by, um, you have to multiply by cosecant of x minus cotangent of x over cosecant of x minus cotangent of x. And then from there, you're able to do a u sub, um, because then you'll get that the top is the derivative of the bottom, and you'll get something with a logarithm involved. And this just seems very out of nowhere. Um, how are, it's not really clear why you guess to do this thing in the first place. But let's see how this works with the universal trig sub in mind. So universal trig sub, so we first look at this and use our trig identities to remember that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So we can write this as the integral of dx over sine of x. And using the table from before, uh, we can replace sine with 2t over 1 plus t squared. And we can replace dx with 2dt over 1 plus t squared. So that becomes um, 1 over 2t plus 1 plus t squared times 2dt over 1 plus t squared. This is pretty messy, but we can clean it up a little bit by you know, taking the reciprocal of this and canceling denominators. So we'll get the integral of uh, 1 plus t squared over 2t times uh, 2 dt over 1 plus t squared. And since we have a 1 plus t squared up top and on bottom, uh, we can cancel those up here. We also have a factor of 2 in the top and the bottom, so the 2's here cancel out. 
which gives us uh, the integral of dt over t. Um, and this is much easier to work with. This thing is just the natural log of the absolute value of t plus some constant t. And then we just go ahead and remember that t is tangent of x over 2. So this becomes the natural log of tangent of x over 2 plus our constant of integration. Now, you will see this um, looks different than the answer you would get if you did it the standard way. Uh, but you can just um, do some trig identities to go and see that these really are the same thing. The universal trig sub is especially great for functions of this shape, where you have um, something with trig functions in the denominator. Um, trying to use other techniques with this thing would be monstrous. Uh, universal trig sub really is the way to go here, and let me show you. So we have cosine of x, and if we remember, that means that we have to replace cosine with 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared, and we replace d dx with the same thing that we uh, had before. So this integral um, becomes uh, the integral of uh, 1 over 2 plus 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared times 2 dt over 1 plus t squared. Uh, now I could um, simplify this thing a little further and do computations then, but what I think would be more efficient is to go ahead and um, multiply through the, just go ahead and multiply things through here. So when we do the 1 plus t squared, multiply it with things down here, it'll cancel the denominator here, and we'll get multiplied by the 2. So what we end up with is going to be the integral of 2 dt over 2 times 1 plus t squared plus 1 minus t squared, um, which gives us the integral of 2 dt over 2 plus 2t squared plus 1 minus t squared. And so finally, whenever the smoke clears, we end up with 2 dt over 3 plus t squared. Now, we're still not quite done yet. Uh, I'm going to clean the board real quick, and then we'll go ahead and finish the integral. But already, we have a much nicer integral to work with, um, especially if you know about things and integrals of this shape. So now we're at this part, and here uh, we can use a lot of the standard trig sub techniques that we've seen before, uh, which we'll go ahead and work it out for those who aren't quite as comfortable with um, integrals here. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this two out of the top uh, because it's, a, it's just a scalar multiple, so we're allowed to do that for integrals, and that gives us two times the integral of dt over three plus t squared. And the trick here is to do the substitution of the following form. We let t equal u times the square root of 3, which means that dt is equal to square root of 3 du, um, which implies that 1 over square root of 3 dt is equal to du. And so when we do that here and clean things up a little bit, that's going to give us 2 over square root of 3 times the integral of 1 over 1 plus u squared du. I might have skipped over some simplifying, but that's, that's fine. And this, we've seen before, you know it, you love it, it's the arctangent of u. And so that gives us 2 over root 3 arctangent of u plus a constant c. And well, uh, what is u? u is... Um, well, according to this here, it's going to be t over root 3, and t is just the uh, tangent of x over 2. So plugging everything back in gives us a final answer of 2 over root 3 arctangent of 1 over root 3 tangent of x over 2 plus c. And so now we've taken that gnarly integral from before and turn it into this nice expression here. Now I'll admit, this is a weird kind of substitution. Um, I mean, why is there a tangent of x over 2 involved for any reason at all? Um, it seems very 
out of nowhere, and yet it works so well. Well, there's sort of a lead up to this that you might have noticed if you watched my last video on finding Pythagorean triples. And that is that we can find all of the uh, rational points on a circle, um, the points where both coordinates are rational numbers, using something called the stereographic projection. You uh, take a, um, a line through um, one of these nicer points in the circle, draw it through, and just calculate where it intersects the circle. In the, old, in the last video, I did it through this point over here, but you can do the same thing uh, starting from this point over here. You'll get different numbers, but um, it's still the same sort of derivation. And uh, one thing you might be interested in is um, slope and y-intercept. We're talking about this line because that's what defines a line. It's slope and it's y-intercept. And so if it intersects the y-axis at some point t, well, then this line is described by um, y equals tx plus t. And uh, you can check this intersects the circle at 1 minus t squared, 1 plus t squared, 2t over 1 plus t squared. And since this is a circle, that coordinate also happens to correspond to the sine and cosine of theta. So that's where the sine and cosine come from. Uh, but what about the tangent of x over 2? Uh, well, one way you can do that is just by using trig identities, but I think it's way more insightful to look at this geometric picture here. And that is first the following fact, that if you have um, some angle from this outer part of the circle, um, this thing over here, it's going to be half the angle as if it were in the center. So if this is theta, this angle over here is theta over 2. That's the first fact to keep in mind. And the second thing to keep in mind is that the uh, slope of a line is just the tangent, the y over x. I mean, that's what slope is, change of y over change in x, so it's going to be the, the tangent here. And well, the slope, as that means that the slope of this line is t, according to the line you're here, but according to this picture, the slope is also just going to be tangent of theta over 2. And since that's the slope, we have this identification between the two. So that's where the tangent of x over 2 comes from in this. So that concludes everything for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you found this helpful or if you think a friend would find it helpful, be sure to share it with them. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, let me know if you have any comments or questions or any recommendations for what you'd like to see in a future video. Thanks. Bye.